In this series of videos, we will look at how we are drowning in a sea of information, why this is not a new thing, and how technology may finally have evolved to a point where it can help us generate an augmented perspective of the chaos and complexity of the world around us. Our story begins with a frustrated government scientist trying to make sense of a sea of information. In 1945, Vannevar Bush was head of the United States scientific programs. This included the Manhattan Project, which developed the atomic bomb. However, that summer, before anyone even knew about the project he was working on, his focus was not on the impact of unleashing atomic weapons upon the world. It was on his personal struggles with information management. Bush found himself overwhelmed with managing tons of information from thousands of scientists across America. He had to organize millions of documents and control their work for the president. In an article he wrote that summer for the Atlantic Monthly, Bush imagined a device called the Memex. He saw the new challenge not as storing information, but sharing and understanding connections between information. The Memex was a tool for building and sharing maps through the information thicket that he was inhabiting. The last thing he wanted was another filing cabinet. Instead, he proposed a system of connections. A little over a decade later, Ted Nelson took these ideas even further. He pictured information as a fluid mass of particles, not large chunks of matter like paper. His idea behind hypertext was that it could form a network of connections between these particles that would allow flow and adaptation as the information changed. In the early 60s, Nelson began Project Xanadu, which aimed to surface connections between bits of information within and across documents in a fluid manner. The limits of technology have stymied its completion ever since. At about the same time, Doug Engelbart imagined what was possible using 1960s technology to enhance human thinking through connections. In 1962, he outlined his ideas in his paper, Augmenting Human Intellect, and later built the online system. Using the technologies of the 1960s, Engelbart made major strides toward creating a connection system that connected humans to computers, but more importantly, to each other. The one thing the Memex, Xanadu, and the online system had in common was that they were all ideas centered on connection, not content, because that was where the real problem was. Of the three, Engelbart came the closest to actually realizing his goal. In 1968, he demonstrated the mouse, the graphical user interface, and early versions of video conferencing and hypertext. All were in service to his project of augmenting human intellect. This mother of all demos stunned an audience, used to teletypes and punch cards. However, what they took away from the experience was not the connection between ideas as much as how Engelbart's ideas changed human-computer interaction. Connecting ideas was still in there, but it faded to the background. Several of Engelbart's engineers joined Team Xerox's Palo Alto's Research Center, or PARC, after the NLS system lost much of its funding. There they found themselves working for a company whose primary business centered on paper. The computer that the teams at Xerox Park developed, the Xerox Star and the Xerox Altair, had to make sense to that company. And so instead of a connection machine, they developed a paper organizing machine, a bigger and better filing cabinet coupled with a typewriter and sketchpad. While Xerox never became a major player in the subsequent computer transformation, the ideas of the Xerox machines made their way onto the new computers via the Macintosh and Windows operating systems, which used the same paper metaphor. This environment was subsequently transferred to the World Wide Web and is still with us today. The paper fork that happened in the 1970s meant that we designed subsequent computing technology using paper-based metaphors using things like files, folders, and indexes to reference information. These metaphors were a bridge to digital technologies, but they limited digital thinking. 
Paper is analog. It drives how we organize and understand information. That's because it's a linear medium with beginnings and ends. It shapes how we think and argue and what we value, certainty and closure. Unfortunately, as Bush, Nelson, and Engelbart all realized, this is not really how the world works. Tim Berners-Lee struggled with many of the same problems as Bush while working for the scientific research organization CERN. He combined the idea of the network with distributed information retrieval and sharing and came up with what we now know as the World Wide Web. Berners-Lee understood where his execution of the web, and especially with the direction in which it developed after him, did not align with the vision of Vannevar Bush, but it was the best he could manage with the technology of the time. Berners-Lee's web buried connections in favor of information retrieval. However, the metaphor was still paper, and particularly in the early days, text was the primary way to transmit ideas with the new technology. In many ways, it was still an additive and not a transformative technology, as we discussed in a previous set of videos. The web accelerated the information problem instead of solving it. And so we came full circle back to the problems that Bush was struggling with in 1945. Instead of being surrounded by stacks of paper and telephones, we replaced the paper with screens and replaced the telephones with networks of routers. Structurally, however, it's still the same problem. We have too much information and not enough context. So what happened to the other pathway, the one that formed the core of Bush's, Nelson's, and Engelbart's visions? We still struggle with the core problem. Xanadur is an ongoing project. However, most people have never even heard of it. Instead, most of the technology world still struggles with the Gordian knot of information overload, misinformation, and aligning paper with the realities of a digital world. Connection remains the elusive piece. Next time, we'll pick up the missing thread of connections and start to explore how visualization and AI might give us the tools to finally see and work with information in order to understand how it relates to each other. This is absolutely essential if we're going to address the wicked problems that we face today.